today at Startup Bootcamp FinTech and Cybersecurity in Amsterdam for the third edition of our vodcast series. And the, the vodcast is Let's Talk About ICOs Today. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Kleinfeld. I'm in charge of the partners here at the program. And I'd like to introduce the expert panel we have for you. Fong Do is a serial entrepreneur. She's a startup mentor and she's an ICO investor. So we, next to me, I have Ivan Kamaket. He's the co, one of the co-founders of Dolphin BI, and they are a platform to analyze ICOs. And on my other side, Edward Korain. He's a cryptocurrency investor and also a mentor for our program. So thank you guys for joining us. So before we get started talking about ICOs and why you would invest in them, um, let's have some definitions about what's the difference between a cryptocurrency and an ICO. Um, want to start? So, yeah, um, an ICO um, is uh, like a, uh, you know what an IPO is? Initial public offering. Yeah, that's great. And an ICO is kind of an initial public offering, but uh, for um, a cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And uh, it stands for uh, initial coin offering. Coin offering, and some also say, uh, crypto asset offering, so mm -hmm. it's uh, both used and uh, from the ICO, right, the company who is going to do uh, the initial offering is creating a token and that token is the cryptocurrency. Okay, and does that mean that all cryptocurrencies have had these ICOs or not really? Not really. It's like in the, uh, with normal uh, companies. There are some companies mm -hmm. they uh, do an IPO and some companies don't. So right. uh, you can be private as a company, mm -hmm. but you can also be public, yeah. and that's the same with uh, like uh, uh, companies who are uh, working on the blockchain. Actually, so you want to add something? Yeah. To that so um, I'd say that the main difference with publicly traded companies is that they've gone through major. Um, checks and balances like through either the SEC or uh, other regulatory affairs. Um, with ICOs, it's, it's a wild west, so um, that's kind of where I think also the discussion we're having today, but what is the difference between investing on the public market or investing in cryptocurrencies? And when it comes to ICOs, there's definitely more risk involved, uh, but yes, yeah, so the risk reward is higher. Obviously, the yeah. reward can also be substantially higher than investing in uh, on the public market. And we'll get to those because we have uh, some questions about some of these really crazy ICO uh, valuations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we get to that, both of you have invested a lot into um, ICOs and cryptocurrencies. Can you tell a little bit about how many investments you made um, and, and then you afterwards? At the moment, I uh, invested in about uh, 17, 18 different uh, ICOs. And besides that, I'm also investing in uh, like uh, the big ones, uh, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, mm -hmm. big cryptocurrencies, and uh, also other coins. Yeah, for me, it's a lot less. I think I've invested in maybe like four or five ICOs, mm -hmm. and for each one, I think I've probably looked at like 50 companies before I invest in one ICO. Okay. Um, and then as far as Investing on the market, I, uh, I do a lot of swing trading. So um, investing in the bigger, bigger uh, coins by market cap, like Bitcoin, Ether, etc. Okay. Um, and that, yeah, like I said, I do that. Um, some trades last a few weeks, some a few days. So many different yeah, investments. And you hold your positions for longer. Yeah, I think there's a difference here. Yeah. Uh, I think we're uh, like uh, I'm uh, having a full time plus. Uh, um, obligation here also at uh, Interviews as a, uh, MD and uh, I think uh, Edward is also working as a trader, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I think you really have to know what uh, time you want to or not only want but can invest uh, in, yeah. uh, in the cryptocurrency market. For me, it's like yeah, I cannot go into swing trading because it's so much uh, like research and work you have to do. So I invest in a different way than uh, Edward does. Um, so unlike Fawn or Edward, I really don't have the time to go in depth into what ICOs I would like to invest in. So 
dolphin would be an ideal situation for me to be able to get the right analysis to decide to invest in uh, an ICO or not. Can you tell us about how you could help me? So basically we want to do several things because there are different investors and they have different backgrounds and different kind of expertise. Uh, so for example, first thing we can do is to actually ag aggregate all data on ICOs in one place. So uh, when you decide to invest in ICO, you can uh, just sift through all the projects quickly instead of spending hours searching the internet. Uh, then we do some uh, automatic indicators well, like with machine learning or just basically gathering data about uh, exchange rates and this sort of stuff. Uh, it, it may be really helpful for traders, but if you want to make a long investment decision, this could also come in use. And finally, we have a platform where the experts from the cryptocurrency industry can collaborate on analysis. So for example, if you have a business person, they can review the project's business model or uh, its economics. Well, if you have a coder, he can review the project's stack. So when they collaborate, they, they can do this analysis much faster and they give you the more objective overview of the project. Uh, so then you can just look at this report and uh, really quickly make the, the, an investment decision. So how do they get rewarded? So if I decide that I'm going to invest in that ICO that they have maybe um, given some good feedback about, are they going to be rewarded by my investment or is there another way you're rewarding them? Basically, if you come onto the platform and you see this expert that you like very much and he gives sound advice and uh, even, for example, if you invest based on his advice, you uh, came out with, with a profit, uh, you can reward him by giving him a rating because the rewards are uh, calculated based on the person's rating on the platform and then are distributed among the experts. Okay, great. So, um, you both have strategies on how you invest in ICOs. Could you tell us a little bit about your strategy? Uh, well, the strategy is uh, quite simple, I think. Uh, with investing in ICOs, you need to do a lot of research, and that's like the uh, first thing. And, um, and you have to do like uh, what in Dutch we call a boer of a stand. Eh? If, <laughs> like do some sanity checks. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like common sense. Yes. Common sense, yeah. Um, well, uh, does this project really need a blockchain? Eh? Like, uh, yeah, I think then 50, 60 percent you can just like. So they don't need the blockchain, no. so it's yeah, not going to fly. It's not going to fly. Right. Um, uh, what you guys uh, or what we here do at uh, Startup Bootcamp is also uh, scouting startups and then there uh, yeah, you have the similarities. Uh, is it a, a good team? Do they have experience? Do they have like a working product or an MVP? Um, and then uh, before that, I uh, didn't then look even into the tokenomics. Uh, uh, yeah, that is already like for me, mm -hmm. and I think probably 95% will already fall off. Yeah. If you do a really quick check on that, it, is tokenomics like if they are working with a large corporate, is that part of that, or is it totally different? No, you have like uh, uh, you have a market cap, mm -hmm. and if you have a total supply and a circulating supply. So there is a correlation between that right. and um, how, how much of the percentage goes to like, the investors. And uh, I find there's a healthy uh, correlation there when I would invest or not. But that's not the first thing I'm going to look at. It's one of the factors. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you're also talking about long-term investments again. Yeah. So I, I tend to look for both for flipping and for long-term investments. Mm -hmm. So for flipping, you might look at other things as well because I guess the perceived success of the project is very important for flipping as opposed to the actual success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that sense. If everyone believes it's going to be a very successful project, it'll probably get, gain a, a lot of traction on the market quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the longer-term success, as Fong was talking about, Obviously, you need to look at the team, what do they actually work on, do a lot deeper due diligence. That's when you're um, like in private equity or venture capital, you're looking to go into a trade for years. Um, whereas in the kind of the interesting thing about this whole ICO market is you're doing seed investing, but you could literally get out of your trade within weeks or months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess it depends on 
yeah, what you're trying to do. Yeah, like, I, I, uh, I understand what you're saying yeah. and I'm also aware, like, some ICOs I also do for the flipping yeah, and then yeah. uh, we uh, have something I call the hype factor. Yeah, if the hype it. factor is really really high and then I just know okay yeah. when it hits the exchange I'm just going to flip this ICO and then, then uh, yeah. Because it's so much hype. So what about the no-go factors? When are you going to say I am not going to touch this? Uh, I think very similar to Fong. I mean, first is looking, do they really need blockchain? Is this like, are they just being opportunistic in a sense and just like trying to go off the ICO hype and raise a ton of money? Or is this uh, token useful in, in the protocol that they're developing, etc.? cetera? Mm -hmm. um, next, no, no go factors. For me, actually, the, the market cap can be a big deterrent, or sorry, the amount of money they're trying to raise. Mm -hmm. So if they're trying to raise 100 million, I think it's pretty much ridiculous for any company with uh, without a prototype or even yeah. with a small prototype and yeah. just starting as a team. Like yeah. that's a ridiculous like amount of money to raise, let alone what valuation are you going to give to that company? Sounds like so, a bubble. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think so. With with a lot of these companies that raise a lot of money, we will see many of them uh, definitely burn and crash. Burn and crash, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but that's not to say that the whole cryptocurrency. Yeah. Uh, um, industry as a whole is a bubble. Yeah, exactly. I don't believe that. Too. Yeah, no, I don't yeah. believe that either. Um, and we'll get back to bubbles in a minute. So can you tell me a little bit about why you founded the platform? Uh, so pretty much what we've seen in the ISO market, especially in Russia, where we come from, is that a lot of people who don't know what they're doing start, starting want to start an ICO. So we decided that it just wouldn't work like that, but we actually believe in the, in the idea is that the ICOs, uh, they could actually allow startups to uh, attract investment directly from their customers. Uh, this is a really good property, but it's always spoiled by people who don't know what they're doing, yeah, who want to take advantage or exploit this. Mm -hmm. So what we wanted to do is to make the market more transparent and more honest. Uh, and specifically more accessible to the uh, to the general population who are only starting to learn about ICOs. And, and do you recognize your um, strategies for looking into ICOs with also the ones that they're talking about? Well, I think for me investing into ICOs, it was more of a natural process. So I didn't do it like Edward, for example, going go through the project directly to uh, choose some project to invest in. Usually I learn about several new projects each day. So if I see a project specifically where I like the tech, for example, uh, I start to dig deeper and decide whether to invest or not. Uh, I usually prefer to invest into the projects with the really good technical, technological uh, mm -hmm. technological stuff. Interesting. Yeah, because, uh, well, they're usually infrastructural projects and you can really bet on them. So you were just talking about um, when you invest, you're looking into the tech and, and mm -hmm. deep into the tech. Well, of course, that's something that I could never do. So then I definitely need someone else's analysis for that tech piece of the pie. And uh, that's what we want to do because, uh, of course, it's pretty complicated stuff. And a lot of experts that, are, that can actually do tech and to review the code, it's pretty hard to find it because they hide somewhere in the forums or the Telegram chats. And mm -hmm. to actually get some analysis from this expert, you have to first find them, then to uh, come to some kind of agreement. While on our platform, there will be already a lot of experts with which you can communicate and whose analysis you can you can use in your investment decision. Perfect. So, for one of you guys to answer, to what extent are banks already working uh, with cryptocurrencies or ICOs? I guess I could answer that because we are talking to the banks uh, here in Startup Bootcamp. Uh, it's a bit of a two-sided thing right now because it's not regulated yet. So banks are really cautious because you run the risk of being made an example of if you're actually the first one who comes into this market. Uh, at the same time, they're very interested because there is there's a lot of money there. So uh, they, are, they explore. Uh, and uh, they try to do some pilots with cryptocurrencies, uh, but still they do not announce uh, any direct intents because that could be uh, that could be viewed as actually going into the market. Uh, but what I can say also is that the banks are really interested in the blockchain itself, so they are doing a lot of stuff with private blockchains. Sure, and and we did see 
early in October that Goldman uh, announced that they're going to have a platform. So we've seen, you know, banks who were like, I'm not touching this, um, to beginning to, to open up. And as you say, you know, no one wants to be first to the game in public, punished by the regulator. So. Um, but there are also some examples, Fung, that you gave before about cryptocurrencies like NEO working with Microsoft and that that's something that you find interesting when you're making an investment decision as well. Yeah, that's, um, if you look at, uh, I think, uh, uh, to add on um, your thoughts on the tech, uh, I think that because uh, a lot of my um, investments are long term. Um, uh, you don't only look at the tech, but also uh, can you make it work? So therefore, partners uh, are crucial. And for distribution. For distribution, or as clients, or whatever. So it's, it's just like normal business. So that's very interesting yeah. because exactly what you were talking about with uh, looking at some of the banks here, Right? That's what we try to do at Startup Bank, at Startup Bootcamp, is help our different startups to find distribution channels. Yeah. And these large corporates are often very good distribution channels. We wouldn't have access to those kind of clients. Otherwise. And the uh, partners for an ordinary person who cannot code and does not tech, mm -hmm. it could be a really good indicator that uh, this team actually has done something and they have some good technology. And good business development behind it. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, so, Going back to your point, I think, I mean, if we look at the U.S., they're they're already regulating this stuff, so the SEC is regulating it, mm -hmm. and China has already completely banned it mm -hmm. for now. Mm -hmm. Pro might change their opinion on that. It's, it's just in Europe and, and other locations where they're still looking at how to regulate it. Mm -hmm. um, as far as banks' involvement, I think there's a difference between uh, opening a bank account for an ICO, so like accepting the money into yeah. there is what you're talking about, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So they cannot get their yeah. their clients to invest into ICOs. It's mm -hmm. very dangerous for them right now. Oh, but yeah, so I, I mean, as far if it's not regulated, I don't think any bank will invest for clients into ICOs. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, like it's it's a completely unregulated market. That's mm -hmm. I don't think that will have happen ever until it's regulated. Um, yeah. So regulators, I think we need some help here because I, I would like to invest, you know, and maybe through your platform, but maybe also through uh, my bank. That, that would be something I find interesting. But maybe it's too early days. Yeah, uh, yes and no. What I find truly uh, amazing in this market right now is that uh, imagine that you could like as a private person invest in Amazon when it started. Yeah. And that's that amazing. That, that's the uh, market where we are at now. Huh? I think like uh, if you would have bought into Amazon when they just were a startup yeah. and hold your positions like all these great. years, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is amazing. really, really great. And that's uh, what's happening now. It is a world, world west, mm -hmm. but there is also an asymmetric reward. And that's uh, why it's so interesting. It's not only like the... Uh, you hear a lot of about uh, a lot of negative stuff about it. Mm -hmm. yeah? uh, also, uh, there is a lot of scams. The yes, AFM through, warning. Yeah, AFM mm -hmm. warning. The SEC. But on the other hand, yeah, you need to start somewhere, and then the regulators come, and you have the China ban. <laughs> and um, uh, but I think the Chinese banned it. Uh, that's my, my own opinion. Yeah. Everything is my own opinion. Here, <laughs> I should say, advice. and no financial advice. <laughs> Um, is that uh, they wanted to uh, protect their uh, citizens because like you guys all know uh, a lot of uh, Asian people like to gamble huh? so they were blindly throwing all this money into these ICOs just to like make a quick buck mm -hmm. and like with asymmetric rewards huh? but and, at, at and the same the, time uh, sorry, uh, yeah, so, sorry. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, they just try to protect the citizens because I believe they are just banning it, making it, uh, regulating it, and opening it up again. So, but that's what I believe. It would be interesting to see. Yeah. But uh, what you want to do with this is not to overdo it because if the ICOs actually become the same thing as the as the IPOs, they basically lose all their value and all of their unique properties. So if, if these uh, ordinary customers uh, who the startup started cannot invest anymore, then what's the point? Yeah. I think you can still regulate some, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, 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 sure. To, uh, yeah. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, you don't have to overdo it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think 
China is, is a very specific case. Yeah. And I think the reason that they regulate it so heavily is because they don't want money to leave the country. Mm -hmm. Like they have very strong economic policies to stop people from, you know, basically, have, yeah, like I said, having money to leave the country. Um, I could see them in the future, like maybe allowing people to invest into maybe Chinese ICOs, but not the other way around, allow Chinese investors to invest in mm -hmm. yeah, because it's. I mean, at the same time, it's, it's, it's in a sense a money grab. Like, why wouldn't you allow foreign investment, foreign currencies to come into your country yeah. and, and finance your innovation? Like, that would be ridiculous not to allow. And so it's November, right? Yeah. Almost December yeah. 2017. It'll be very interesting to see. Do, do they open up, right? Yeah. We're also at the, the height of, I think, how much uh, Bitcoin's value is. Over 10,000 today, right? Well, yeah, last night That's went nice. over 10k USD. So, and since May, maybe it was around 2,000 in May. I, I'm not sure. Uh, so, six months ago. Well, I know at the beginning of this year it was around 1,000. Yeah. So I mean, it did uh, uh, 10x this year. That's a lot. And we looked at some other cryptocurrencies. I believe the top 10 uh, cryptocurrencies last year. Uh, November to this year and it was a 12k increase at least so 12 yeah, times right yeah it was a 12x increase yeah. I, uh, I was giving a workshop uh, the other day and just for fun huh, I made like this uh, uh, Excel sheet what if you have put like 10 uh, uh, just a thousand euros in the top 10 like mm -hmm. from last year so and uh, what yeah what would it have done today yeah. And then you would have made 12x, just like put 1,000 euros in the top 10 and then it's pretty doing incredible. nothing. Absolutely. That's yeah. pretty amazing. I don't think you can get it anywhere on your savings account. Yeah, definitely not. Let alone in any <laughs> other investment, I think, like yeah. private equity, venture capital. Well, yeah. So let's go to venture capital for yeah. a minute because we know that in 2017, for the first time, more money was raised for starting companies via ICOs than via venture capital. So is this a trend that we're going to continue to see or is this something that should alert us to a potential bubble or is it both? Um, I think you, you have to point out that it's not just the entire venture capital, right? It's uh, what, what was invested in blockchain. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty specific area, but uh, it's, it's a good sign for us, for the entire industry, though a little bit bullish. But at least it gathers attention from people, and uh, that's very good. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'm actually not sure about that. I think it might be total money yeah, in, yeah. invested by venture capitalists. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Um, so, but it was for the like few months, like month of uh, June, June, July, yeah. like, onwards. Um, but maybe because I, I've seen like the, the statistics for the uh, blockchain startups, but maybe it's just. Yeah. I also think it was the, the total uh, VC. If you only look at uh, Tsos, huh? it, how much was it? Over 200 million. So that's crazy, and they have to pay it back right now. Probably. Let's see. No, yeah. Very interesting. So. I mean, I think like uh, Fong started off by saying, like, what if you could invest it in Amazon at the beginning? Yeah. I think everyone is interested. I mean, especially the younger generation is super interested in tech. And um, we read a lot about tech, it's part of our world. Um, yet we don't have the opportunity to invest in these companies in the seed round. If you're a venture capitalist, you need, or you, you have like a crazy amount of access, you need a lot of capital, like all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's like a, in, kind of like an old man's club in many ways. And um, this is like, this, just because of this ICO, which kind of this year started blooming, that allows, you know, people from no matter where they live in the world, how old you are, who you are, how little you have to invest, um, to be part of these like amazing tech companies. And, um, so, so would you say it's democratizing investments like as peer-to-peer -peer lending was in the beginning as well? or? I think way beyond that, to be honest. I think this is one of the bigger economical shifts we've seen in, in a long time. Yeah, I, I, to add on that, like uh, a lot of times people, if I, uh, I go and like ranting on <laughs> about uh, cryptocurrency and how, uh, how nice it is to do, but I started actually not uh, as an investor, but uh, uh, reading into the tech because I was really interested in a uh, blockchain. Mm -hmm. And um, 
If you look at uh, the internet, if you would describe uh, internet, what it gave to like us, eh, like the public, is freedom of information. And if you look at the blockchain, what I believe uh, and why there will be a paradigm shifting technology for the coming decade, it will give freedom of value. Eh? And the first shift is actually eh, what you just mm -hmm. described, democratizing investments. But uh, I think it will beyond what we can imagine. Yeah, I think that's that's a good point. We had no idea what the what the internet would allow us to do. Yeah. So trying to explain that revolution right when it started was yeah. useless. I mean, still today there's yeah. new innovations coming out all the time, right. of which this is kind of one as well. Like yeah. the well, internet has allowed us to yeah. do this. Like how would have you ever so twenty of this concept? Uh, twenty three years ago, maybe more. I was looking into the internet. Be interesting to see, you know, 23 years from now, where are we with the uh, ICOs and cryptocurrencies? Thank you, guys. Uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's probably becomes a common thing. So, uh, and even before that, so you can uh, you can notice that these cycles of these uh, large shifts uh, they become shorter. So, I know we have the industrial revolution, then it's probably a big jump, but then we have the internet. Now, now we have blockchain and it's 20 years from, uh, from the beginning of the internet. So, what will we have, the ne will we have the next economic shift in 10 years, for example? That's very interesting to see. Absolutely, it will be interesting. When we've had that shift and we all know this is a more mainstream, if that happens, it'll be great to look back and say, hey, we were here at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. So, Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Let's regroup in 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining our podcast on ICOs. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and please do share it with your friends and colleagues if you did and come back when we have our next and upcoming series. This was the third and we have three more to go at least for this program.